Hello, this is my Prusa MK3S clone that I built a few years ago. Or I should say what's left of it. I've stolen a bunch of parts off of it for my new build. When I first made it, I used these bare upgrade parts. And I also used these Drylin plastic bearings instead of ball bearings. And it worked for a while, but then I started having stiction problems. And I, I believe it's caused by a couple of issues. For one, your bearing length here is fairly short. And when this head is up here, all of the weight is out forward of the bearings and the belt. So when the belt is going to pull on that head, it has a tendency to twist the head. So all your motion is like this. And eventually, this motion wore off bearings so much that it started wedging itself. So instead of upgrading this one, I decided it's time to move to a Core XY design with Clipper firmware. And I thought it'd be fun to design my own in such a way that the center of gravity of the X-axis head is actually in line with the belts. So whenever the belts are pulling on the head, it's not going to twist it in any way. So this will be less wear and tear on the bearings. And you should even be able to use the, uh, the plastic dryland bearings. So if you want to make your own, I'll have all the files on my Thingiverse site. This includes the STLs, bill of material, and the full Fusion 360 CAD model, so you can modify it if you like. So I started my design with the x-axis head, and I kept the 8mm shafts, but instead of them being vertical, like on the Prusa design, I made them horizontal so I could move the filament in between the two shafts. And my main design considerations were to keep the center of gravity of the head somewhere on a line between these two shafts. I tried to have it uh, as centered as I could, but it's, it's not perfect. And also to make the extruder as close to the hot end as possible. So, here's what I came up with. It has a Orbiter version 2 extruder on top, and it's been working fairly well. My only concern with it was the stepper motor runs fairly hot on it. And I did a little bit of research, and this is this is normal. They sized this down uh, to save on weight, and the temps that I'm seeing are well within spec for what they're showing on their site. Uh, most people like to keep like to run their extruder uh, with the main shaft facing forward, probably so they could you know see how it's turning. Um, but I wanted to be able to look at the gears in case I had a problem inside. And my printer is going to be inside a cabinet, so I can't get my head in there to look. So I decided to keep it forward like this. So the hatch is forward so I can peek in on the gears if need to. And it, it helped uh, a little bit with the design also. So on your main platform here that holds everything, I've got the three dryland bearings that are clamped to the platform. Um, I had originally hoped to use carbon fiber rods with the design to save a little bit on the weight. I ordered some, but they're not very straight. So I'm gonna go back to the metal shafts for right now. And if anybody knows of a good source for those, uh, please let us know in the comments. Um, so I've got, the platform has got clamps for the belts on both ends. It's got a little piece that will clamp together to hold them in place. It's got some grooves to line up with the belts. And then I've got a BL touch on the back side. It's a bit far away from my nozzle, but uh, that's as close as I could get it for now. For the uh, hot end, I'm using... I'm still using my E3D V6 hot end. I'm, I'm not going for speed at the moment. Um, so this should keep up with everything uh, with how I want to print. Um, it mounts in a hole inside the platform. And here's a, uh, a previous print. It mounts inside this hole here. And it's got this piece that will clamp in 
and lock inside that groove on the top of the heat sink. And I was surprised. I thought it might be a little wobbly, but uh, it holds it pretty uh, sturdy. So I was happy with that. I'm using the uh, stock fan that came with the V6 with the uh, plastic shroud. And I got a uh, titanium heat break. And I bought a new copper heater block. And then I replaced it, uh, the nozzle with a new one and got a new sock on there. For a park cooling, I'm using a 5015 blower. And I was looking for a design um, that had some good reviews. And I found one called the DII I Cooler but I couldn't get it to fit with my design quite like I wanted to. So I went through and made something similar to it. And basically what it does, it blows in and uh, the area shrinks down as it travels the full circle and it'll give you a full 360 part cooling around your nozzle. So if I did everything just right and I hang it by the belt, it should hang straight. If I didn't have the weight uh, centered, it, it would be all crooked like that. So for the frame, I'm using 2020 aluminum extrusions. And for the corner, I'm using these large uh, aluminum brackets to keep everything square. I really like these. Uh, they're nice and wide, keep everything square. And um, they'll let you, they have a little bit of adjustment to them. So if, if you need to uh, reposition them. Um, I lucked out. On the y-axis, I had a pair of 15 millimeter THK linear rails in my parts box that, it, that would, were just a perfect fit for this. So I'm using them. They're probably a bit overkill for this, uh, but they, they should be pretty nice. Uh, the belting system is a what I call a stacked belt system, uh, very similar to what's used on the Voron and the Rat Rig designs. Um, there's no twisting of the belts on these and in the back um, on the bracket that holds the stepper motor I'm using that for my tensioner I just have a, a screw going through this guy uh, that's pushing this whole bracket out and you can tighten it for my tension for the bearings I'm using uh, a pair of uh, F695 RS flange bearings and uh, I've got a couple, anywhere the, uh, the belt has the teeth on the inside, I'm using these uh, tooth bearings. I just got one here and then one on the front side of, of this guy. And the belts, um, since I have the belts to where they're right in between the two shafts, I have to take them around the ends of the shaft, between the ends of the shaft and the saddle on the linear rail. Well, normally you'll just see one idler down here, and if I did that, you'd have a big gap to have clearance uh, for the belts. And I didn't want that big gap. I was afraid it was going to sag quite a bit. So I added another idler here just to bring those two belts in close together so I'd have a nice narrow gap in between the saddle and the ends of the shafts. And um, just a suggestion, I see a lot of designs that will use just uh, normal screws, like a five millimeter screw for your uh, shaft on your bearings. Um, in my opinion, this, it doesn't make a very good shaft material. Uh, for one, there's very little uh, support area, support surface, and they're actually quite loose on there. Um, a better option is if your design has to tighten in through uh, the bearings is to use a shoulder screw. Um, these are machined to have a better fit and uh, the only real issue with them is they can be a little pricey. You know you could spend three to five dollars per screw on them on the nice ones. If you don't need to screw through your bearings um, you can do what I did. Just use these. These are bearing steel shafts and uh, they're very tight fit and they're like 80 cents cut to length. Uh, the only issue with those is they can be almost too tight to where you have to press uh, them onto the bearing. 
So for the z-axis, I'm using a system very similar to uh, the rat rig design. It's got three points that will hold up the bed, uh, two in the front and one in the back. And each point is uh, independent of the other, meaning they each have their own uh, driver on the motherboard so they can operate independently to level out the bed. Um, you don't need the, uh, the bed screws and springs to uh, level out the bed as in the old design. So each point has its own uh, 9mm linear rail. It's got a uh, stepper motor with an integrated lead screw. And then uh, it's got a 3D printed arm. And inside the arm is a plastic nut for the lead screw. And it's got an uh, anti-backlash system on the top of the spring there. And at the end of the arm is a pocket. And the pocket has got a couple of um, three millimeter dowel pins that form a track um, for this ball to ride into. And the ball is mounted on the underneath of the uh, aluminum bed. And so that track keeps it so that ball can only move in one direction. So, uh, the rat rig design has a uh, has a ball, just has a thread on the inside of it. I like this a little better. It's got a hex on it, so you can put a wrench uh, to tighten it up. This is called a mag ball, and it is uh, made basically for delta style printers that you can put on the uh, on the ends of the shaft, and it's got a, uh, a large magnet on the bottom that'll keep it in place. So for the bed, we have an eight millimeter aluminum plate. It's got a um, silicone mat heater underneath and on top it's got a PEI uh, spring steel build surface with a magnetic sheet underneath it to hold it in place. And there's uh, two main principles behind this system. Um, the first is the type of material we're using. Um, most aluminum plate is made uh, just what you call a hot roll method where they've got the, the hot metal and they'll roll it between some large high pressure rollers uh, keep rolling it down until they get to the right thickness. Unfortunately, this adds a lot of stress to the material. And then when you heat this, if you use to heat it up, that stress is going to come out and it's going to warp your plate. Uh, so what this is, this is called a cast aluminum plate. And you'll hear it called a Mike 6 or, or some other acronym. And basically what they do is they'll pour the molten aluminum in a, in a form and then they'll machine it to the right thickness and hopefully that does not have any um, stresses in the material so when you do heat it up it's going to stay flat. Uh, the other idea behind this uh, is if we were to take this and just mount it on the corner to a, like a large uh, concrete slab and then heat up that plate those fixed corners are not going to allow it to move. So when you heat it up, it's got to move somehow. It's got to expand. So it's going to move in the middle, and it's going to make a big taco out of it. So we want some kind of method where we can have a controlled expansion and keep everything flat. And that's what this is. This is called a kinematic mounting system. And so when it's got that ball, each arm, uh, those tracks all point to one point on our bed so that when we heat up that plate that one point that everybody's pointing to is going to stay in that position and everything else is going to expand out and that's what this track does it keeps it uh, keeps it aligned and it won't let it twist left or right so um, I know what you're thinking this is a this is a big plate and it is um, two things on that. First, um, I got a cutoff 
when I when I bought it and I didn't want to cut it down too small because I didn't have my design complete so I went ahead and left it large and then um, I didn't want to have a huge long arm you know normally you'll come out and you'll, you'll have your arm all the way out underneath your build surface but I was afraid that I was I would gonna have to make it very large uh, to support the weight, and I didn't want it sagging, so I, I thought I'd rather just have the aluminum come out rather than the arm. But I need to cut it down and probably add some insulation to it. So here she is. This is COG. Uh, to answer some of your questions, the, uh, the build area is about 250 millimeters in each axis, give or take. Uh, you can size it up if you want to, um, but if you go much bigger, you might want to look at the 3030 aluminum extrusions, like on the rat rig design. And the outer dimensions are about 450 millimeters wide by 470 millimeters deep and 470 millimeters tall. Uh, so how fast is she? Well, right now I've got her running at about 120 millimeters per second for the perimeters and 160 for the infill and the acceleration is about 300 or 3,000 millimeters per second squared for the default acceleration and 4,000 for the infill. Uh, I'm sure she could do uh, faster than that though. So how's the quality? Well the quality is pretty good. I think it's better than the older printer but it's, it's kind of subjective. Um, the big thing I've noticed is that my bridging and overhangs are a lot better, and that's probably because of the cooling, I'm guessing. So was it worth it? Well, for me, absolutely it was worth it. I, I enjoyed the design, um, building it, learning Clipper. This is, this is what I really like to do. And now I've got a bigger, faster printer, and I'm enjoying little things like the uh, magnetic build surface is, is fun. Um, but is it worth it for you? Well, probably not. Um, I don't have any experience with other Core XY machines, but I guess, I'm guessing this is going to be comparable to the Voron or the Rat Rig designs, but it, it's certainly not better. Um, I think the main reason you'd want to go with this type of design is if you were really stuck on using a carbon fiber shafts with dry limb bearings to uh, to try to reduce the weight and I think for that I think this idea is is really good for that so what's next well I still need to get an accelerometer for it to uh, do in input shaping I need I probably would like to get some carbon fiber shafts um, and possibly upgrade the hot end uh, to something make it a little faster. But hopefully this project will give you some ideas for your next build. So have fun!